God has made. Ain't you glad he brought you here safely today? Always a great opportunity to come in and praise his holy name. I was glad when they said, let us go in the house of the Lord. Praise his holy name. We welcome you here today at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where the doctor, Reverend Willie Wells, is our pastor, 52nd Street, 401. So we just praise your name when you come here today. This is where the Lord is. It might be raining our doors and looking cloudy, but the sun is shining here at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church.
right, good morning, Pleasant Grove. Let us prepare for our morning scripture reading. We will be coming from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18, the New International Version. And let us all read together. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump call of God, and the red with Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Amen. 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 It's prayer time. If there was a time to pray, the time is now. Do you know you can call upon his name and he will answer? We ask if you are able to stand with us. If you are able, please stand with us. And as I pray, you pray. And as I said, there is much to pray about. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you as we come to this holy place, your sanctuary, the house of prayer, this hospital. We come, Lord, to you. We come to the holy one, to the righteous one, to the just one, to the perfect one, to the loving one, to the holy God, our Father, our Savior, and our Deliverer. We thank you, Lord, for being who you are. We praise and magnify your name. You alone are God. There is none like you. So we come today to magnify and praise your holy name because of who you are. And Lord, because of who you are, your righteousness, we recognize in our sinful state, Lord, we have done some things that is not pleasing in your sight. And we agree with you, Lord, that we have sinned. Whatever it may be, thought, word, deed, or lack thereof, we agree, Lord, we have done them. Lord, we thank, we're thankful that you are a forgiving God. You are the forgiving one. So, Lord, we thank you for forgiving us and continue to transform us to become more like you. You said as far as the east is from the west, that's how far you have removed our transgressions. Thank you, Lord, for being so forgiving. Lord, we lift up those who are here today in Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, this congregation, this hospital. We pray for those who are in need right now, Lord. We pray for those who are going through right now, Lord. We pray for those that financial situations have uh, has taken their mind and uh, their focus is off of you. Right now, Lord, as, as we focus back to you, let us look into the hill from which comes our help. Our help comes from you, O oh Lord. For you own everything. And we believe, Lord, that you are on the throne and you are sovereign. We thank you right now, Lord, for this congregation. We pray for them right now, Lord. Meet them at the point of their need. Lord, we lift up our pastor to you right now. Touch him. Have your way with him, Lord, as he comes to bring forth the message. We not only pray for him, Lord, we pray for his family. We pray for protection upon him right now. We pray for the leadership of this church. All those who lead us with positions, Lord, have mercy upon us. Keep your hands upon us right now that we do your will, your perfect will. We lift up the city of Fairfield to you right now, Lord. You know the situation. You know what state that we're in. It looks like things are hopeless, but we know, Lord, there's hope in you. That the transformation is coming. We believe, Lord, that transformation is coming to Fairfield. We pray for the churches, church leaders right now.
right now, Lord, that you have your way with us. We pray now for the state of Alabama. We pray for the United States of America. We pray for the president of the United States of America, Biden, right now, Lord, and the uh, vice president, Kamala. We pray now for the election that's coming up. We don't put our hope in the election, but we put our hope in you. And whoever gets up in there, Lord, we still lean and depend upon you. For you are the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you right now, Lord. Have mercy upon this world. Have mercy right now. We need you, Lord. We need you now more than ever. We need you. Every hour, we need you right now, Lord. So have mercy, oh Lord. And we'll give you the praise that we proclaim your gospel message to those to this lost world that is in need of love, that is in need of you. Have your way now, Lord. We thank you. We magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All say amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I've come to praise the name of the Lord. I've come to magnify his name. I've come to glorify his name. For he is worthy. song this morning is from hymn number 211 it says what a fellowship what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms
Good morning, everybody. Hey, we are blessed here today to, first of all, to see another day, one that we've not seen before and we won't see it again. So you got to miss, make the best that you can out of the day. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, mm, good to see you. Yeah, where you been? How you doing? Amen. We have uh, been blessed this morning to have uh, with us uh, our new member who's, uh, she ain't new no more. She, after two weeks, you ain't new, so you're just a member. But Valerie Williams, she has here with her today uh, her classmates from J.S. Abram High School. Here it is. Watch this. The class of 19... 82. Let them stand. Let's see where y'all are. Come on, y'all stand. Let's come. Come on, y'all. Let's let them know we welcome them. Amen. God bless you. Yeah, 1982. J. S. Abrams. Y'all remember Woodlawn High School? We used to whoop y'all. We, we used to drag y'all and then Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Well, we thank y'all for blessing us, and our life will never be the same just because you have come. And uh, hopefully that we can say something and do something in your presence that let you know that we ain't just phony, uh, that we're for real, and we know that you could have gone some other places, but you chose to come here. And uh, I know Valerie probably twist your arms and your fingernails and refused to uh, talk to you if you didn't come, but you came. And as a result of that, you have blessed us, and we thank you again. Come on, church, and let J.S. Abrams, 1982. God bless you. You can be seated in his presence. What a mighty God we serve. Got two men in that class that showed up. Man, we always, dra we always dragging, ain't we? Dogs, I'm with y'all. We together. <laughs> All right, come happy that you guys came to visit with us. Um, I stand before you just to greet you and say welcome to Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We are so excited that you came and blessed us this morning uh, with your presence. We hope that um, you will be blessed. Pastor Wells really said it all, so I'm standing here just going off of what he said. But we are excited that everyone, all of our guests are here. Uh, worshiping us. We appreciate you. We thank you for coming uh, to Pleasant Grove this morning. We hope that when you walked in the door, you felt the love of God in this place. Um, for those that are present, we do have a token when you leave this place, stop by the work welcome station, um, and they will give you a token of love. Uh, this morning and again we say welcome thank you for stopping by Pleasant Grove this morning please come back again um, we love you and we hope you have a wonderful and a beautiful rest of your day God bless you praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I am super excited just to have this opportunity to remind all of us of the ev events that are coming up very soon. They are fastly approaching. And I believe you and I know that the scripture is true. So in 1 Timothy 5 and 17, it says, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in doctrine. And we know that is Pastor Wills. He labels in that word to feed us. On Wednesday, he even gives uh, words of encouragement on Saturday mornings. And we know on Sunday, we are truly fed, not just us, there are so many that benefit from his laboring in the word. So let us purpose in our hearts to honor Pastor Wells and First Lady Wells by 
um, by giving, being obedient to God, to honor the man of God and the one who helps him. Let us purpose in our heart to give for these 30 years of service. Mark your calendars for each of these appointed and anointed times. Earmark your cash for each special occasion. The diamond and pearl gala, the memorabilia and souvenir booklet, and the Sunday anniversary worship service. So the diamond and pearl gala is Saturday, October the 12th at 6.30 p.m. at The Club, 1 Robert S. Smith Drive, Homewood, Alabama, 35209. Please secure your tickets by Sunday, September the 29th. Adult tickets are $75 each. Children under 12 tickets are $25 each. The memorabilia book and the souvenir booklet, gather your family together to get an ad. Go to those who you do business with to get an ad. The deadline for these ads is Sunday, September the 29th. Full page, $100. Half page, $50. A quarter page, $25. Submit your ad to pgmbc21 at att.net. Black and white or full color photos are accepted. All ads are high resolution printed ready. And the grand finale will be Sunday, October the 13th. You know, pastor's heart is for us to have God's word in our hearts. So meet us at 915 uh, for Sunday school for the hour of change. And then at 1030 AM for the worship service, there is no assessment, but please see your ministry leaders so that each ministry can give out of abundance of the heart. The colors for Sunday is white, champagne, gold, and green. Remember, when blessing Pastor and Lady Wells, we are essentially blessing ourselves for Acts 20 says in part, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Thank you, and God bless you. It's giving time. It's giving time. I know that we have all asked the Lord for something and he has given it to us. And now is our time to return, to give back. And this is also Special Effort Sunday. And we know what the assessments are, but we can go beyond that if you would like. And Malachi 3 and 10 tell us, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again and we know God promises are true so it is given time and now we will uh, have Deacon Walker to come and pray and give you directions Heavenly Father, we magnify your name today. Uh, we thank you for the great things that you've done for us. You are a worthy God. 
Thank you for every blessing, Lord God. Uh, Father, we come right now to uh, be obedient to your word, to uh, give in this offering. Uh, we ask God your best blessings upon each and every one that will give. You've said in your word, Lord, that if we will refresh others, that you will refresh us. That the more we give, the more you give to us. So, Lord, we ask that you would take uh, what it is that we give today, that you would bless it greatly, that it may be used to upbuild the kingdom. We pray for everyone, Lord, that is already given. We pray for all of those who would give in this service. Bless those, Lord, who had the desire to give but just wasn't able today. And we thank you for all that you do, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I think uh, it's the third Sunday. If it hadn't been mentioned, uh, we ask each family for an additional hundred dollars to help liquidate our mortgage. And it's not each and every individual in the family, unless you so desire, but it is for each family to pay an additional hundred dollars. All right, would you please stand and be governed by your issues. Just, just a quick announcement on that. Uh, what Deacon, Deacon, uh, Deacon Walker meant was on the, on the last Sunday, we do the capital campaign for $100. This is uh, third Sunday special effort and we ask minimum $25 special effort, or you can go beyond that. Uh, follow the guise of your usher as we come to give.
take it to the Lord in prayer. me up. Uh, that 
someone has messed me up. Yeah, it's a good mess up. Take it to the Lord in prayer. My God. Father, we thank you and we bless your name this morning, God. Thank you that we have the landing strip and we have the strip where we may be able to cast all our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. So here we are, Lord, feed us. Here we are, O oh God, mold us and shape us, create always within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit, O oh God, in the matchless lamb that was slain, one day will come the line of Judah. Until that day, we hollow your name. It is in Jesus we pray. Let all the church say amen. Say amen again. Say it one more time. Amen. God bless you. Let me get you, if you will, those of you who are standing, thank you, and those who are able to stand where you stand to show reverence uh, to the word of God. Yeah. That one messed me up this morning just now. I'm going to take um, a relook at what we've already heard this morning in our scriptorial lesson. Um, in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 16 and 17, I'm going to take those few verses and, and preach out of them. We are internationally, the NIV, we are, we love King James, and there are some translations that are crazy, but um, the NIV, the New International Version, we switched over this year so that we could get a little bit more user-friendly, and I think it does well, so in verse 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive, and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Look at your neighbor and say, uh, this preacher today, I'm going to preach from this subject. Get ready. Look at them again. Get ready. Look at them one more time and look over there and smile. Let them say, get ready. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Get ready. And um, I think the passage has already preached itself. All I need to do is open up doors of the church. And uh, if you're not saved, you better get saved. And if you are saved and hopeless, get your hope back on. Uh, 
time is winding down uh, for the church age. Uh, for these next weeks or so, maybe months, I don't know how long uh, God has arrested me uh, to get us prepared for the next great event that will occur uh, in human history. And that is called the rapture. Uh, Jesus' first coming was when he was dispatched from heaven down into a Bethlehem manger. And that was his first coming. Uh, his second coming will be when he come back, not as a lamb, not to be slain, but he coming back as a lion. And he's coming back to right the wrongs that have occurred throughout uh, the existence of man. Uh, Jesus' second coming is not the rapture, that's, that's the rapture. And we are closer than we've ever been before as the body of Christ, uh, of him coming back to snatch us out of this mean world. That's why we should be urgent in our witnessing. Uh, we should be excited about witnessing, and we ought to be uh, certainly um, non-apologetic about witnessing the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, because I believe he's sitting on the right-hand side of Father God, and, and I believe that uh, he's on the edge of his seat. I don't have spiritual authority to say that, but I believe he's on the edge of his seat, uh, ready to come back to receive his church. If you're not born again, uh, you will be left. Uh, if you want to go through the tribulation period, because after the rapture comes the tribulation period, and that period will come uh, when Jesus comes back and get us out. Now, those are some in the circles of religion uh, feel like they're going to be raptured after the tribulation period. If that's what you believe, then you go right head on. Uh, my Bible don't say it that way to me. I don't believe that we're going to be raptured in the middle of the tribulation period. Uh, the Bible tells us very succinct and clearly that he's going to allow us not to go into that hour where he will judge the world, not because we did it right, but because we made Jesus our choice. And I get a witness here. And uh, he is not going to allow us to go through the judgment. The first uh, three and a half years, there's going to be uh, nothing but peace. The devil going to give his power over to the Antichrist, which is a man, and he may be alive today. Uh, and when he does that, he's going to go in Jerusalem and set up his, he says, his earthly kingdom. And he's going to have people to think that he is the Messiah. And he has a remedy, solution for everything that happened. Uh, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And many are going to come towards him. Many are going to align themselves with him. And the next three and a half years, because the tribulation period is seven years. The last three and a half year, years are called the great tribulation. That's when Satan is going to pull off his his foolishness, his, his little red pitchfork and his tail and horns, and anybody that don't ascribe to him, he's going to have them killed. But the church is going to be in heaven with Jesus, and there are going to be 144,000 men that have not slept with women that are going to be preaching the gospel, and people during the tribulation period are going to be afforded to be saved. But every last one of them will be killed 
But Paul said it best to be absent from this body, talking about born again believers, is to be present with the Lord. I ain't getting no help up in here. And that period is hurriedly coming uh, before us. Eddie Kendricks uh, with, the, or with the temptations said, I never met a girl who makes me feel the way that you do. You all right. Look at them 82 folks. Look, look at the 82 folks. Whenever I'm asked who makes me dream, who makes my dreams real, I say that you do. You are out of sight. So fee fi fo fum. Look out, baby. Because here I come. And I'm bringing you love. That's true. I heard somebody say that. So get ready. Get ready. I'm going to try to make you love me too. So get ready. Get ready. Because here I come. Get ready. Because here I come. I'm on my way. Get ready, because here I come. Oh, let me turn this iPad over. I got the wrong message. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> Jesus can't tell a lie. He is going to come back. And it's not his second coming. His second coming will happen after the tribulation period is over with. For a thousand years when the tribulation period is over with, uh, the scripture has very clearly said that he's going to take Satan and those fallen angels and, and he's going to put them in a pit and seal it. And for a literal thousand years, there'll be peace on earth. No racism, no drive-bys, no having to lock the doors, no more having to guard yourself, no more prejudice. No more differences for a thousand years. The lions and the adders will have fun together. Don't have to worry about uh, being uh, false. Don't have to worry about uh, being nice, nasty. For there will be peace. And the reason there is peace, because the king of kings. Talk, Reverend. And the Lord of lords will be sitting on his earthly throne and for a literal, tell your neighbor, a literal thousand years, there'll be peace on this earth. Just what he started in the Garden of Eden before Adam and Eve messed up, he's going to carry it out on this earth. Tell your neighbor, that was worth me getting out of bed to come to here. Get ready. Because here I come. It ain't Eddie Kendrick. It ain't, it's not no, no baby. No, it is the one that knew us. Who took on the sins. Who knew no sins. Who came to get in our place so that we can spend eternity with him. And for this few moments that God gives us to come, I want to preach through these few verses talking about get ready. The reason why we need to get ready because there will be a return. Say the return. Amen. And what that simply says is that in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 16 through 17 again says, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven. For the Lord himself 
Now, sometimes, some things, you don't need folks. You need him. And somebody wrote a song that I need him every hour. Every hour. And I would go a little further. I need him as long as time is. I need him. Not every hour, every moment, every minute. I need him in my life. And the scripture says with a, when he shows up, he comes from heaven. He ain't coming from some inanimate place. Heaven is real and hell is too. And there are those that won't talk about it because they think the church is going to empty out. But you got to tell folks the truth. There are too many folks that are going to die and go to hell in church. You got to tell them the truth. And the scripture says if you love them, you won't withhold the truth from them. And the scripture says that if you love them, you'll tell them the truth. If you see your brother or your sister in all, you go to them, not to judge them, but go to them so that you can help them. Because what you've gone through, it was God that brought you through it. Amen. And what they're going through, it is God who will bring them through. God is not a respecter of person. He loves everybody. Y'all, he loves Donald Trump. Somebody says, I don't know about that. Well, he does. The Bible clearly tells us that Jesus will return. When I think about looking at the text, the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, the call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Well, the return of the Lord at the rapture will be announced by three spectacular sounds God is getting us ready for the next great event when he pulls the church out now who makes up the church it's born again believers let me say this it's not folks that play acting it's not those who said that they possess, but they can't profess. It is those that have been washed, baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled with fire from God Almighty through his son Jesus Christ, who wasn't fit to live, I'm talking about me, and could not die, but Jesus loved me so much, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life, not through you acting right, not through you being associated with the right church, but having the right Savior. Ain't but one Savior. Jesus stood somewhere one day and said, I am. I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father unless he comes through me. I, I thank God for that word because in these modern day times that we live that people don't like to hear the truth. They would rather get shouting over a falsehood. But I tell you what, if I'm going wrong, tell me so that I can get it right. And if you're dependent on your job, your spouse, your children, your team, your association, your friend, your sorority, your church, you're in a bad shape. All of us have our down moments. Sometimes I'm looking at some folks right now. You, you want to shout, but you can't get past the fact that you got something going on that you can't handle. But try him. Lord, have, try Jesus. He's the best thing. He's the best thing. He, 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 he's the best thing. He's ever the best thing that you can ever want. He'll calm your fears and he'll solve your problems and he'll soothe your aching soul. And he'll anchor you down in his knowledge and will and power. And he won't let you go even when you try to get away from him. Tell your neighbor, I like that. So there's three spectacular sounds that would announce the return, amen. And one of those sounds is the, the sound of the Lord's command, amen. One thing that will acknowledge his return is the sound of the Lord's command. You see that in the first uh, few uh, words there, chapter 
4 verse 16 for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command y'all have heard about uh, taken right some some people some people uh, would be left and some people will be taken when the rapture occur there may be two in the field one may be taken there may be two in the bed one will be taken the other will be left there may be two at play one will be taken and other will be left what I'm saying here today is that not everybody talking about him going to him God has allowed these instruments of time and ten years to come in our way. The pandemic was designed, I got a feeling that I know what I'm talking about, designed to separate the, the good from the bad, the weak from the poor, and all of that. I believe that God is trying to get the church shaken so that it can come out with his hands up number one and not only come out with the hands up but come out saying something that nobody could give me my salvation but Jesus himself I ain't got nobody shouting here this morning God saved us not because we deserved it but it was his grace and his mercy that caught us and apprehended us and grabbed us and strangled us and tied us up because we tangled up in him it was God's grace unmerited favor God's God's mercy that he didn't give us what we rightly deserve aren't you glad this morning that when that sound comes that loud sound folks may not hear it but if you've been anchored in the Lord you'll hear it can I get a witness whether you are dead sleeping or alive be a, be a loud be a loud spectacular sound and the scripture says with a loud command God himself through his son Jesus Christ not only that but then he says there'll be the sound of Michael's voice I help you with that the middle part of verse 16 says with the voice of the archangel. Say voice of the archangel. Now you, you may not have been to seminary. Uh, but one thing you need to know. That an archangel is different than just a regular angel. There are seraphims. That, uh, that holler holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. When you won't open your mouth at church, you ain't got to worry about it. God got some angels there, seraphim, and they holler, holy, 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 and they cover their eyes, and they cover their feet, and they take the other wings and fly around, and they holler, holy, 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 holy. Then there are some cherubims. And the cherubims is what God put around the exorcists of uh, entrances of, of Eden when he kicked out uh, these two people called Adam and Eve because he had to put some, keep them because they would have gone back in. Y'all know how y'all are. When you put a sign up and said no entrance and there you see a bunch of folk trying, church folk too trying to get in there. You know, don't, don't, don't this. But God had to put angels around the entranceway of Eden. Had he not, there was a tree there. And the scripture said that if you would, if they would have eaten of that tree in the shape that they were in that was falling, they would be doomed eternally. Weren't you glad that God knows how to take care of us even when we ain't got something to take care of ourselves? And he put flaming cherubims around them. All right, that's two that I talked about. But then archangel. Michael we know about don't put Gabriel Gabriel just come and tell you what God getting ready to do you ever wake up after you done drunk that Kenneth and then you wake up and see see Gabriel you might be all right he just come tell you stop drinking in fact tell your neighbor stop drinking but but if Michael is at the foot of your bed hold up look out Michael is the fighting angel. He's the fighting archangel. There's one more that ain't in the text, so I won't talk too much about it, but he's called Raphael. 
And uh, when Michael has done all that he's been built to do, then Raphael takes over. Don't, don't mess with God because God got always. God don't need us. I just want to let you know that. God don't need our praise. He don't need our worship. He certainly don't need our protection. God is God all by himself. And Michael, the scripture says, the second sound that you will hear, the sound of Michael's voice. The scripture says that with the voice of the archangel, that's what you're going to hear Jesus. Jesus, he ain't got to shout himself. He just get Michael to shout. He coming. Anybody ever been to a wedding? And them pretty little girls putting them little daffodils down there. I don't know what they are, but anyway, flowers down. And then they said, the bride is coming. The bride is coming. The bride is coming louder than that. So loud that the dead that are already fallen asleep in Jesus will hear it. God have mercy. And we who are remain, sometimes we hear too many voices, but when that day comes, when God darkens the skies, he's not going to come and touch the, the earth itself. He's going to come to the atmosphere condition of the world and he's going to shout. Michael said, he coming. And ain't nobody going to hear him but those who know him. Can I tell you, can I tell you that God knows your voice? Can I tell you God knows your heart? Can I tell you God knows what you're going through? Can anybody here to know that God is not oblivious to what's going on in your life? He knows what's getting ready to happen in November. He knows how the devil is trying to come on you. He knows what you can handle. He knows what you can't handle. He knows your voice when you can't utter it. He knows the moan that that's all you can do. God knows and the scripture said with a loud voice that Trump the Bible says the archangel, the loud boy, he coming. And folks, too crazy that church folks don't believe that he's coming. Let me tell you, look down your row. Ain't nobody on that row where you're sitting, but just look down and act like they down. Tell him he's coming. Yeah. There's a third voice. Amen. The third voice, the sound, and it's the sound of the trumpet. I play trumpet. I play trumpet. God used that trumpet to get me through Alabama State University. And uh, I don't play it. Oh, you don't play your trumpet as much. Well, I play it, but I don't play it for y'all. <laughs> I've been called to preach. Yeah, I've been called to preach the gospel. That sometimes will clear out some of these churches around here. Because the folks don't want to hear the truth. Jesus says in the last days, they won't endure sound doctrine. Y'all need to just wake up. Come on, kids. class of 82, you know what I'm talking about. Folks, folks will rally behind a lie any day and time more so than that of the truth. Why is it that this fool that's trying to run for office, now maybe I shouldn't have called him no fool, I'm sorry. But folks, forget about that they are saved and in no thousand member churches and 10,000 member churches and they fall in a lie. Why is it that you have a crowd when a lie is being propagated? Well, it is like this. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Proud is the way that leadeth to destruction. Don't follow the crowd because it seems to be prestigious. No, no, don't get hooked up with the wrong folk. Don't think that because there's a crowd, it's right. Because that's not always so. Everything on the other side ain't always green. Can I get a witness? Listen, glitter and gold would... Didn't, yeah. Yeah, don't tell, don't tell them that they're going to run you out of here. <laughs> the sound of the trumpet. Notice what he says there in verse 16. I'm in the Bible. You didn't close yours up, did you? He says that, and with the trumpet call of God. With the trumpet call, the sound of the trumpet, the sound of Michael's voice, and the sound of the Lord's command. We're rushing that he's coming. And when you hear that, it's too late to try to get it right. Can I preach? Got to work now while it is day. 
Night is coming when no man can work. You can't put off tomorrow what you need to do today. If you ain't saved here, and if you're listening to me on that TV, if you're not saved, do it today. I ain't trying to scare nobody, but I'm telling you, tomorrow is not promised. Yesterday is gone. All you have is today. And if you don't heed the call, one going to be left and the other going to be taken. It has been my desire to get my whole family saved. When I say my whole family, I'm talking about me, myself, my wife, our children, and their children to get them saved. Because you got to start at home first. Come on, talk up in here. Try and get everybody else folks saved, and then your folks in there dying, going to hell in a handbasket. Shut your mouth and get to talking about somebody. Tell somebody about how good God is. Let them know that if it were not for God on my side, tell your neighbor he's better than better, gooder than gooder. He's all right. Get ready. Oh, now here I come. And then secondly, so that's the return. Amen. That's the return. But then secondly, notice the resurrection. When I'm talking to Christians that already know these slangs, why you ain't shouting? Because whatever is dead, God can resurrect it. That ain't part of my text, but I feel like I need to say it. Whatever is dead in your life, and God wants it resurrected, God knows heavenly CPR. God has paddles that can shake a dead man and a dead woman. I ought to have about 12 of y'all in here and I'll make the 13th one to know that you ain't always been like you are. You ain't always been that way. You ain't always been raising your hand. You've been raising your hand for Bobby Boo Bland and well, you've been, ra- I got to say with the 82 folk, Bobby, oh, oh, Prince, I'm sorry, yeah. You, you, but now God has come in your life what a time, what a time. Aren't you sad that you didn't have this earlier? Aren't you glad that the whiskey ran out and the wine ran out and the party is shut down? But man, when you hook up with Jesus Christ, Lord have mercy. When you hook up with him, it'll be an everlasting party. When I think about the goodness of him. Say resurrection. Yeah, so resurrection. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verse 15. You got your Bibles? How many of y'all believe that one day Jesus is coming back? A lot of folk don't believe that. Because when you believe that, you don't waste your time with stuff that don't matter. You quit letting folks talk they talking about. They, they just jealous. God done bless you with the material things. And you know what? Don't you stop wearing it. Don't you stop driving it. Don't you stop walking in it. Don't you stop living in it. Because somebody don't like it. Because when you didn't have nothing, they were still talking about you. And now that God has blessed you, they're going to talk about you. But it ain't about them. They ain't got no heaven. They don't have no hell. But aren't you glad that Christ Almighty, Lord have mercy. Can pick up a bow down head. He's a lifter of our heads. He takes our soul that's been shattered by sin and he takes our lives and he reconstructs it and he's molding us and reshaping us and you ain't doing what you used to do. You ain't what you ought to be but God's still working on you. Give me 12 of y'all that'll stand up in here and say that I ain't what I used to be. And I ain't what I'm going to be. Yeah, but he's still working on me. Get ready. Because he's coming. The resurrection, according to the Lord's own word, 
we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, verse 15 now, will certainly not proceed those who have fallen asleep. <laughs> Went to Baltimore a couple of weeks ago to the National Baptist Convention, and even after having, uh, having a preferred ticket paid for it and got a preferred seat, had to get in line. And uh, I was in boarding uh, number seven. I said, what good did I go pay for this ticket ahead of time for? And uh, so I asked one of my buddies, I said, he said, you ain't flying first class. I said, well, I wasn't going to fool with no first class money. I just, I said, what they do in first class? He said, uh, they, uh, you got leg room, first of all, with your tall self. Then they bring you a little something if you're a little nervous. Abrams, y'all don't, God done change you now, don't do that. <laughs> and they give you little something to calm you down. And, and, uh, and you up there, you first on, first off. Aren't you glad that when that day come, Paul them, Bartholomew them, Jeremiah them, all these are bad preachers that think they got it going on, all of them. Listen, I'm so glad that those that died believing that Jesus will come, Jesus is going to get them up first. Grandmama that had to pick that cotton. Come on, talk to me. Listen, uncle that got hung up on the street corner line by a noose God gonna call him if he died in Christ gonna get the dead up first y'all ain't talking to me you ain't gonna go before them except then have all prayer all you want to God remembers in his sanctified memory who it is where you are and what you've done for him that's a good preaching point for another sermon aren't you glad this morning that what you've done for the Lord that nobody brought it out and publicized it aren't you glad that God understood it and as a result of it, he says well done thy good and faithful servant the resurrection verse 16 says for the Lord will himself will come down from heaven I keep on seeing that himself with a loud command with the voice of the archangel with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ shall rise y'all did I get that did I mess up yeah the dead in Christ Lord, have mercy, shall rise. Let, let me tell you about it. There are those who are asleep illustrate is being illustrated in the scriptures. Help me, Jesus. Sometimes we become emotional when I love one. My, my mom and dad died, my brother. Man, my sister, my other brother. Man, I had to cry in my own private chamber. Because they tore me up, especially when mama, you know how mama. Mama, mama, but that he was all over the, he was like the temptation papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was at home. But mama, and, and God called mama home and it tore me up. But what helped me up was mama fell asleep. Mama died in Christ. If they die in Christ, God going to wake them up. But they died in Christ to get away from their labors so that God can reward them with rest, fooling around with baby kids and pook and ray ray them. That's what we all was to our folks. Out wringing their hands at night, you out there partying. They told you to be at home for the street light went on, but you, it's 12 o'clock and... And uh, you going to test them and see, can you, because you the man. You 16, you got, you got it going on. And I showed up, and my mama, I knocked on the door because my key didn't work. And I, I, I couldn't get into the house because she had it locked up. And I said, Mama! She said, you going to sleep outdoors tonight. 
I said, no, you ain't going to do me like that. She said, you did yourself like that. Now, I don't know what my point is in saying that, but I need to let somebody know this, that our God don't leave us unprepared. Can I get a witness? I got to stay with this text here because when we think about those that have died in Christ, I don't want to minimize it. I just want to help you. If mom and them died in Christ and it's been 12 years, you got to let them go on rest. Amen. Listen to me. I don't mean to be insensitive because they in a better place if they died in Christ. You ain't got to say amen, but let me help you. Because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And where is the Lord? He's in heaven sitting on the right hand side of God. And I'm glad that when Jesus went to the cross, everybody that died believing in him in the Old Testament, the Bible said he was the first one on that third day morning when he got up. Then after he got up, he woke some other folks up and sent their souls to heaven. Aren't you glad today that God won't ever run off without you? He won't ever forget about you. He'll resurrect that spirit that's fallen down. He'll pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. Yeah, resurrection, resurrection. Three, in John the 11th chapter, verse 11. Write it down. I'm trying to get through. It's 1155. These folk got to go and eat. We do too. John the 11th chapter, verse 11. Remember I said that the illustration of those that are asleep is visualized in the text throughout the Bible. I can't give you all. I just got to give you a few. Acts, John, the 11th chapter, verse 11. Notice what he says. After he had said this, what he said in verse 10, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Asleep and death for a saint is synonymous. I ain't talking about that sleeping that y'all do. Well, you, you, know, you, you know what y'all do. I'm talking about, you know how you got to get up 12 times in the night? Give me a man that ain't shamed to say, I know what you're talking about, preacher. You know how you toss and turn? You can't, you can't, get, can't get that sweet spot? Mm -mm. When God calls you in, he puts you in a sweet spot. He said, Lazarus has fallen asleep, but... Y'all, let's shout. <laughs> Preachers on the front row, one over there. But I am going to wake him up. <laughs> I don't know how we're going. It don't make no difference. I just need to know and let you know that those that have fallen asleep in Christ, they with him, and when it's time to wake up, Oh, Lord. Can't nobody call your name like Jesus. And number two, Acts the seventh chapter, verse 60. Acts the seventh chapter, verse 60. Hey, you got to write this down. Hurry up. I got to move. Then, thank you. I, I love you, this crowd. Then, uh, then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord. Do not hold this sin against them. When he has said this, he fell asleep. Maze, that's all I've been saying. Boy, they've been, they've been placating internet with Maze. Boy, Maze was a bad boy. Yes, he was. I ain't got no help in here. That's all right. I can be my own witness. Maze was a bad boy. Maze was on tour up until he died. You know what? Would that be a nice thing to be a Christian and done all you can do? You, you crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's and God has checked all the boxes. And he said, that's it. Now, come, come on, let me give you some rest. 
is not negative, even though it might be morbid. What it is, that if God can put to sleep, God can wake up. Can I have a witness? And so he says he fell asleep. Last text, Acts the 13th chapter, verse 36. Tell your neighbor what you checking your mail for. Yeah, you better get in this word because get ready. Cause here I come. Yeah, verse 36 in chapter 13 of Acts. For when David has served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his father's and his body decayed. But who want this? After these many years. Hair ain't got gray. Teeth falling out. Hearing gone bad. Knees acting up. Eyesight dimming. That's their ears going bad. Can't open the bottle up because your hands metal tonsil. You ain't got no... Can't wear the shoes. You, you wear them nice pumps, but you got them slides. Yeah, you can't do all that. You remember how you used to be able to get up and remember what you got up to get up to do? Mind done got a little quiver. Your temper done got a little crazy. Sound like some Alzheimer's folks up in here. But time is working on our physical bodies. Can I get a witness here? But aren't you glad I'm almost where I need to be? Aren't you glad that God has promised us a brand new body? Come on, y'all. He got a brand new body. He'll, he'll wake up. He'll wake up. Make that new body that made with hands and put that spirit that he's already conformed and put it in that new body. And what a time, what a time. What a time, what a time. Man, talking about playing hot scops and, and all that. What a time, what a time. Man, having a good mind, you know what you got up to do and know why you got up to do it. What a time, what a time. Knowing that there are no limitations. But we ain't there yet. But get ready. Because he coming. Thirdly, it will be noted by the redemption. We looked at the return. We grabbed hold to the resurrection knowing that when all this old with, when this mess, this what you call fine mess, God got something finer than that. Yes, Lord. You won't have to go on and put on Victoria this and all that. Said preach, Reverend. Yeah, I like that, I'm telling you. But the redemption in 1 Corinthians, the 15 chapter, verse 42 and 44. It may be on the screen. Let me help you. Because the redemption, your redemption draw it now. I'm talking about saints of God. To you that not been saved, don't walk out of here. Don't turn off the TV. Don't disconnect. Don't unplug. Because you can have salvation the day you hear my voice. When you hear my voice talking about Christ, yeah. he'll save anybody from the gutter and take you to the other. Can I get a witness here? Don't you turn off. Don't, don't care. Cause you may not be saved now, but for this benediction is given, you can have salvation today. And you don't have to change nothing. All you got to do is come to him just as you are, weary, wounded, and sad. And I'm here to tell you that he'll save the lowest of the lowest. How you know, Reverend? Been there. The redemption. First Corinthians, Paul is talking in 15 chapter, verse 42. Notice what it says. So with it be with the resurrection of the dead. See, see, let me say this, because see, these folks in, in Thessalonica, they were concerned. They believed, they, they believed that their loved ones that died, but they had a problem. When would they be wakened? They, they, had, they didn't understand that. And so they were asking questions, what happens to them? And the Bible is very clear to them about what happened. And that changes your whole perspective on things when you know that weeping may endure for a night. 
But joy is on the horizon. It may not be your morning. It may be your midnight. Whatever it is, joy will come. After you done gone through what you gone through, after you stood the test of time, after you told the Lord I love you and for you, God, I will never forsake you. After you told the Lord not only save me, Lord, but use me in your service. You think God going to let you go down this lane to not having enough, not having the right, not having this? Do you not know that God is able to do greater things in your life? All he wants you to do is to depend upon him. Don't you know that all the hell that you took last year God's going to reward you for that. Don't you know God ain't waiting for you to get to him to reward you. He wants to reward you right now. Don't you know that the God that you serve is a living vessel, willing vessel, and he will bring whatever going to you. He'll take your captive and he'll set you free. He'll make your enemies your footstool. He'll prepare before you in the table on the presence of your enemy. He'll prepare a table before you. He'll take your haters and and have them hallelujah you he'll take your low down necessary enemy and make him become your friend just gotta let him do it now watch this because the redemption is here when i think about this when first corinthians the 42nd verse chapter 15 but look at verse 43 said it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power verse 44 it is sown in a natural body it is raised a spiritual body is if there is natural a natural body there is also a spiritual body i am redeemed Bought with the price. I want new bodies. You want to hear about it? I ain't got to put a couple more points. You want to hear about it? You got time? Our new bodies will be incapable of sickness and death. <laughs> Some of y'all caught up on the now. God wants you to get caught up on what it's going to be. Your glorified body, saint of God, not an ain't saint, is not going to be able to get sick and experience death. You don't know where to shout. Because you stuck on the fact that you got to take a pill for this and a pill for that. And God said, no, you don't get caught on that. You got to look past them pills and see what I got in store for you. You need to look. You ever been to the movie? Yes, you have. Don't act like you ain't been to no movie. And, and then you sit there and you look at them previews of the attractions coming. And that sets you up for the next time you go into the movie. Unless you bootleg and you get it done. You know. So. Our new bodies will be incapable of sickness or death. That's good, isn't it? Somebody says, how can you prove that? I, what you think I've been doing up here for the last 20 minutes? It's in his word. God's going to make this body. If man makes this body, you're in bad shape. You can put Botox everywhere. But you ain't to keep on putting Botox. Isn't it amazing you take a pill for this and then the side effects? Worse than it was, I think I'm just going to deal with this disease. I could go somewhere, but I ain't going there, preachers. Yeah. Secondly, our new bodies would be identical to the body of the resurrected Jesus. <laughs> you ain't getting happy. So when Jesus was resurrected, y'all do know he got up, don't you? Somebody say, you, we waiting to the end so you can get him up and ride early and sign him. I'm doing that right now. Because he got up. And the scripture says he showed up after he was resurrected. And he didn't knock on the door. He just appeared he didn't walk through the walls he just appeared 
Now, when I read the text, he did that. What you think you going to do? Jesus came back, number one, when he was resurrected, he hung around for 40 days. The reason why, to reassert those folks that what he had said has come to fruition. Number two, he hung around so that he could encourage them to keep on keeping on. Number three, he hung around so that they can have physical, Lord have mercy, physical testimony that he lives. Lord have mercy. Y'all, we may have not been back there when he got up, but we know he got up. Can I get a witness? We know that when he got in that upper room after he'd been resurrected, he just showed up. Thomas wasn't there, and then Jesus came back another time so that Thomas could see it because Thomas was down like a whole lot of folk down today. And Jesus showed up again. Not only that, don't y'all know when them two men were walking on the road of Emmaus after the resurrection had occurred because of the crucifixion that day, and they were walking away, going back home, no hope no no majesty no mind no precept but then jesus didn't just trot up the bible said he just showed up and when they went to talking with them they didn't know they said man what you mean you don't know what done happened back there and then jerusalem you don't know what happened and then jesus kept on talking with them and then they had some food that evening and on the beach, they were doing fish and chips, Reverend Johnson. <laughs> Amen. Cook, cook delicately. And Jesus was sitting there with them. And he was eating. That's what you're going to have. That's what I'm going to have. But you ain't going to have to take no Pepsi. You ain't gonna have to do no uh, what that uh, that uh, purple pill. Yeah, no, I'm talking purple pill, Jay. For for acid reflux. Okay, he he the baby in the, he the baby in the acid reflux. You know how you got to get you a sprite so you can belch. Uh, you ain't had to do none of that, cause he gonna give you a glorified body. Lord have mercy, ain't that a blessing? Get ready! Get a glorified body. I got to move. I got to move. In Philippians 3 and verse 20 through 21 says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 21, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, We'll transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Yeah. Go up that time, my Creflo, time, you're going to be Jesus. No, you ain't going to be no Jesus. You ain't going to be no God. Time, we little gods, you might be little idol gods. And God says, I have no false God before me. But we will be like Jesus, just like his body. Yeah, you ain't going to be just flying around. You ain't going to just be hanging out. When Jesus come back with us, and we ain't going to just be having some tore up bodies, can't hardly get up, arm can't raise your arms, and ear, ear wax all in your ears, can't hear. Our new bodies will be identifiable by all who knew us on earth. Right. Ain't this good, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Folks that don't go to heaven, you won't remember them. Because if you can remember them, you'll be sad. God knows how to wash what he need to wash. But everybody that's going to heaven, I'm going to know y'all. How many of y'all saved and you ain't shamed? Man, y'all going to know me when y'all get to heaven. Y'all going to say, that, that crazy preacher that over there in Fairfield. Y'all going to know me and I'm going to know y'all. I'm going to say, that them crazy folk from uh, J.S. Abrams in 82 that came to church. That's them. You're going you gonna to be known by them and they're going to know you. They may not look like they used to look him, but you're going to know them. Because you'd really notice that your, your personality is not by your clothes. It's not defined by your hairstyle. It's not defined about the shoes you wear. It's not defined about what you're driving. It's not defined by where you live. Your personality, your character is defined about Christ that's in you and he's moving and shaking you, shaping you. Tell your neighbor, I'm, I'm going to know, 
I'm going to know you. You going to know me. Yeah, yeah. So give me my money. Before you get up there, because I'm going to know you. I was at a funeral one day and tell you the truth. And uh, preacher got up, and it was so, it was people just was, they was just hard and, you know, deaf. And, and rightly so, they, they were just no hope. And that preacher got up, and I'll never forget this. And he said, who in here owe the deceased some money? And he said, don't, don't, now go on, go on to it, because I know you. He said, give it to his wife. All I'm saying to you, man, look what we have to look forward to. That folk going to know us that love Jesus and we going to know them. Can I give you one just for, you, you don't believe that, okay? Look at Matthew 8, chapter, verse 11. Matthew 8 and 11. I say to you on screen, I say to you that many will come from the east and west and will take their place at the east with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. No. Remember when Jesus was on the, on the mountain of transfiguration? And, uh, and then they looked up there and they saw, look who they saw, Abraham. Who they see? Somebody said, we don't know what you're trying to say. Remember when Jesus was being transferred, we're going to build us three temples. And they knew, the disciples knew Elijah, he knew, the disciples knew them, and they knew them. I just need to let somebody know, you ain't going to see mama, your loved ones that died in Christ like they used to be struggling down here. But you're going to know them. I was graduating from Alabama State University in um, 12, 15. Uh, and um, man, it was, we had the biggest graduating class in 1979 down on the yard. It was in the summer. And Alabama State got us. So they wanted to get some more money out of them grants and out of us. And so what they did, they offered a class that we needed and we couldn't use no electives. And I had heard about them doing that in the past for folks that had gone down, so I thought I was gonna be smart. So I had about seven or eight electives. I said, they ain't gonna get me, because when it's time for me to get up out of here, I'm leaving Montgomery. And I looked at the curriculum and the class that I needed, they did not offer it until the summer. But I discovered that there was a whole lot of folk had them class. We had the biggest graduating class uh, in, uh, in the history of Alabama State University in the summer. I had to go to summer school to graduate. And in summer school class, the, the, the yard was full of folk because we all needed courses like that. So when I finally walked across the stage and uh, man, them folk were hollering for their for they children up there. And I said, man, my, my mom, I know she here. But uh, mom, weak mom, she ain't gonna, ain't gonna, she ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be, she ain't gonna, she ain't gonna. And them folk called my name. They were talking about, they were talking about blank, 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 soon call loom. And then they blank, 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 cum laude. And uh, y'all know where I'm going, don't you? And uh, they got to Willie Wells, Wells. I just said, thank you, Lordy. <laughs> uh, my wife, I used to try to cheat off her paper. She wouldn't let me cheat. Yes, she did. She let me cheat. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I just thank you, Lord. And they called my name. And out of all them folks shouting, I heard my mama. She said, Junior! Man, I got to step in a little... Because I was the first one to go to college in my family. All I want to tell y'all, that man, God knows you. And he got you. Fourthly, then the rapture occurs in verse 17 of chapter 14 of 1 Thessalonians, and I'm almost done for this hymn. Get ready, because here I come. 17 verses after that, we who are still alive, that's us, y'all, it could be, and left will be caught up. Say caught up. 
Listen, I ain't talking about no maybe. I ain't talking about no trying to figure it out. I'm talking about caught up. Yeah, and I ain't talking about. I ain't talking about whipped down. I'm talking about caught up. Yeah, together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. He ain't coming to the earth then. That's not his second coming. His second coming when he comes after tribulation period is over with and he done done his thing. No, this is caught up. This is after the dead in Christ have risen. We that remain will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. He said, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord. How long? Forever. Forever. I mean, forever. All you got to do is just take care of praising God. That's all we do all day long. Won't be no night. Won't be no more downtime. Just praising God forever. Won't have to worry about trying to conclude a sermon before 1230. No, we, just, we just be like, we just be, just, just, just be like Paul was. He was preaching and preaching for hours and hours. And Eutychus was up on, on the outside of the the walls of the building with the windows open and, and the candles going on and Eutychus was tired. Paul had been preaching for hours. I'm talking about literal hours. Read your Bible. And Eutychus fell down and broke his neck. Paul said, hold up a minute. And he went down there and laid on him. And God worked on him and got Eutychus up. And I guarantee you, Eutychus went back where he was. And I guarantee you, he didn't go to sleep. And Paul went back and finished up his 1,500th punt point. For you who are looking at your clock. And so we've seen that the rapture is going to happen. We've seen the return say, yes, we did. You've seen the resurrection say, yes, it will. And you've seen the redemption. Thank God that I've been redeemed. Yes, Lord. But then notice, if you will, lastly, the reunion. Lord have mercy. There it is. <laughs> the reunion. Man, if you miss me down here, don't be too sad. Yes, I told the Lord, you uh, take my wife before you take me. And he said, you know, you don't know what you're asking for. Because <laughs> she probably praying the same thing. <laughs> but that ain't no problem. And we're going to see. She ain't going to be my wife when, I, when we see us, each other again in eternity. Uh, but she, she already fine. And me too. Uh, verse, verse 17. After that, we who are still alive and left and be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Here it is. And so we will be with the Lord. First, at the moment of reunion, the dead will come out of the grave and the spirit will re-enter their glorified bodies. Secondly, the reunion occurs when all of us, and it could be us, who are alive and remain will join them in the air. And that will be a Family reunion. OJ's a family reunion. And that's why it's important for us to be talking about Jesus and getting folks saved. Because after a while, we ain't going to be able to do it down here. One day, he's going to snatch us up out of here, catch us away. And and the writer here ends with these words in verse 18. Repeat after me. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Jesus did die. But he arose. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Because I know 
that the future, and that's why I holler, life is worth the just living because he lives. That's the, that's the word. It don't need no hooping. It need to be heeded. Ain't nothing wrong with celebrating the fact that one day, man, these old frail bodies of ours won't hold us no more. We leave here today knowing that we don't know when that hour is going to come. But if you aren't saved, you need to get your business fixed today. If you're not saved, you need to come to know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That woke us up, didn't it? They didn't plan that, and I sure didn't tell them to do it, but that shout going to be louder than that. But just make sure, if you happen to fall asleep, make sure it's in Christ. And if you don't know him today, come to know him. All you got to do is, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I believe that you hung, bled, died, and rose that I might live. I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my life. And if you invite him, I declare, he'll come. The rapture in the twinkling of an eye, blink your eyes, is quicker than that. And salvation can be just like that. If you know him, and maybe you got a little off track because of life, but now God is re-envisioned your eyes. To let you know that you're not left behind. That God has ordered your steps. And God will restore your joy. And then if you're looking for a church home. And the master is speaking to your spirit. And this is where he wants you to be. Obey him. We're not a perfect church. But God is still working on us. And if you're looking for a perfect church. Don't you join it. Because the moment you join it, it is not perfect. Just need to know we all are God's children. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but thanks be to God. That he'll save us, he'll restore us. And most important, that he will give you a place where you can work out your soul's salvation. And as the song has been sung or played, or however the case is, if you're here today and those three categories, if that's one of yours, as that goes forth, when you just walk out of those pews and come down, these preachers are waiting for you to take your hand. But it is God, if you're not saved, that will take your soul. He'll give you a heart of flesh and replace that stony heart. He'll give you joy, unspeakable joy. He'll restore the joy of your salvation. But you got to make that move today. You got to do something. Get ready. For Jesus is coming. Church doors are wide open. Go ahead, Jane. What they call him, what they call him.
aquí Y'all can run on now and see what the end gonna be. I mean, really tell the truth. How many of you, because what God has said to you today, that you know that not only is he coming, but look what he has in store for us. Those who have given their lives to him. So you're gonna have good and bad days, ups and downs, highs and lows, hot and cold moments. God with you. God got you. He's not oblivious to what you're going through. And he's already prepared a place for you. So he says in John's gospel, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. My, in my father's house of many mansions, if it were not so, I would have not told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, there you may be also. And life, and life is worth the living child. And life, and life is worth the living child. And life, and life is worth the living 
noise unto the Lord, all ye saints. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout hallelujah. If you're born again, tell the Lord, thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Now we're preparing to leave this place, never from his presence. And as God has blessed us, he's blessed us coming in. He's going to bless us going out. What you need to remember as God prepares us for that day, that would be a great day. And he started off with this message today. To reassure, to reaffirm, to re-inaugurate his word. And he's coming again. Will you be ready? Receive the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and now forevermore. Shout amen. Shout amen. Shout amen. Come on, sing with me. Sing. Amen. Sing. loudly clap your hands unto the Lord hey I love you ain't nothing you can do about it will you tell your neighbor I love you nothing you can do about it class of 82 Abrams High School God bless y'all Man, y'all have made us shout up in him for coming. Thank you, Val. Bring him again. Amen. Hey, I want to I want to greet you out in the foyer. I know we still got some stuff going on with COVID, but we'll try to try to air hug or fist bump or something like that. But I want to meet you out there and uh, bless you again as you leave this place. Amen. Tell your neighbor, get your clothes, get your stuff, get your pocketbook.